Hey, what's going on with you guys? Thank you for tapping in with me again today. And if you're new to the channel, I'm Cleveland. So, guys, did you check out the last video? You did? Good. If you didn't, check it out. Stop this video, get on over there, check it out, then get back on over here with us. But, check it out. So, um, what are we doing today, guys? What are we doing today? So, let's put an eye on what we're doing. We're doing some more work on this 225 right here. So if you don't know, this is a 225 gallon saltwater aquarium. It may not look like much, but I promise you, it used to be magnificent. We moved here about two months ago. That being said, we lost about 80% of our saltwater fish, invertebrates, corals. Well, we lost all corals. We lost almost all invertebrates and we lost 80% of the fish. So currently in this 225, we have in here two eels, we have a tessellata and we have a yellowhead eel. Then we have in here two panther groupers and then one white spot grouper. So that's it. This tank, like I said, if you wanna see what this tank used to look like in its former glory, I'll provide a few different videos at the end of this. You could take a look at them. This, it was nice, it was nice. So nonetheless, we are slowly trying to build the tank back up. We're not talking about fish and things like that. We're gonna worry about who we have right now because you know what? They went through so much and for them to still be here, they deserve all of my time and attention. In the future, we'll add some more fish, but for now, we'll worry about them. That being said, you can see off to the side right here, we have a 150 gallon aquarium right there. That was just home to our large Florida soft shell turtle, but guess what? We're turning that back into a saltwater aquarium as well. When we bought that, when we bought that tank two years ago, it was saltwater. We went from that tank to this tank. So you know what? When we can, we're gonna build this back up to saltwater. We're gonna have corals in there and everything. So all the fish that we had in our 37 gallon, we had, man, that tank was really beautiful. We had gym tank, purple tank, sailfin tank. We had clownfish, I mean, the nice clownfish, you know, not just the regular clownfish fish. We had the mocha storm clownfish. We had wrasses in there. We had the, the flame hawk. We had um, just so, um, dory. We had the hippo tang in there. We just had so many beautiful fish in there. Corals, man, like we had the purple lobster. Ah, we had so much in there, so much in there, lost it all. The only thing that survived is our, we have our fire shrimp up there in that above the tank refugium right there. So um, nonetheless, we're gonna build that back up. They are going to go into 150 and they will get a whole lot more friends. We are also going to put a 75 gallon under there. I'm going to make that a very large sump refugium. Not gonna put a skimmer on that. I have probably a skimmer off to the side or something like that. But I want to make sure that I load, I want, to, I want a refugium. I never had a real refugium. That's kind of like a makeshift above the tank refugium. It would be cool. It would have been, per it was nice on my, on my 37 gallon, but it's not really that nice on this 225 because of what happened. So um, if you want to make it above the tank refugium, I'll also provide you with a video for that. Uh, but yeah, so we're going to basically set up the 75 gallon under this tank as a refugium. Under this tank right here, I will move the skimmer over to this side. That's what we're working on today. I wanna to set the skimmer back up right here. So it's been down, it was cracked. When we moved, it cracked. I thought it was over. That thing is about $450. That's, I can't afford to just flush that down the drain. So I repaired it. I siliconed it, did a water test on it for a few days. It is good to go. That's what I'm talking about. When I say saving money, that's what I'm talking about. Not only did I save some money with that, with that refusion right there, which was $450, I patched up that 225 gallon that I cracked a year and a half ago, and that tank was $1,600. So we're talking about $2,050. Also the sink over there, I've, I, I patched that because that had a hole in it, it was cracked. I sprayed that with some with some rubber flex seal. It's, I've been using it ever since, no issues whatsoever. No problems, that was like $300. So saved about $2,300. $2,350, that sounds like a good, that sounds, that's, that's money in the pocket. That could have been money spent, so, you know, yeah. Anyway, so those are the kind of like the tips and tricks that I try to present to you. So if you haven't seen any of those videos, I literally showed how I fixed 
every one of those things. I made a video on how I repair, how I repaired the sump right here. I made a video on how I repaired the 225 right there. I made a video on how I repaired the sink right there. So I'm not keeping none of this secret. This is not, I'm not trying to keep none of this secret. I want to share this stuff with you. I want you to save as much money as you can. I want you to save any way that you can. So that's the point of this content. Back to the video. So we're setting that sump up today. I found my hoses. I couldn't find them. We've only been here for almost two months and I couldn't find them. They wind up getting moved. So I couldn't set that back up. I also found a curtain. So I don't really run lights on this aquarium. That's why it's dark because it's right in front of this window. But even though it's, even though it's dark and I don't run light, it's full of algae. It has algae on all, on, all, on all panels of glass. It even had it on the front. I took it off. Um, but that's because of the window. You see all this algae, brown algae. Let me show you. Look at this. All that algae, that's from, the, that's from the window. I took it off the side, but look at all that on the back. And I didn't even get it all off the sides. And this is no lights being ran. All algae from, look at that, from the window. So you see all that light coming in? So I'm going to put a curtain blocking the whole back. Now, I can't really do anything about the top. I can't. It's going to still come in through the top. I love the window. I open it up every day. We need that light. But by me putting a curtain along the back, I can limit the amount of light that's coming in. Well, not eliminate it, but just limit the amount. As far as this up here, we are, like I said, this is going to get moved to this 150 gallon right here. That's where that little above the tank sump is going to go. Bam, right there. Then we no longer have to worry about anything being up here. Once that's done, then I'll build me a nice little um, canopy top on this aquarium as well as this one, as well as this one up top, as well as that one up top. Yeah, still gonna put something up there because she likes to splash. And yeah, the water is definitely looking murky. She went in there digging in the sand, kicked everything up, and now it is way worse than what it was. You see it right there? See her silhouette? Something tells me that this is kind of like what she's used to in a while. Muddy bottom, sandy bottom, you know, the water's not dirty, but again, that's just, you know, kicking up the dirt, kicking up the sand. And you could imagine if they were kicking that up in the wild, that it would be a muddy area. Nonetheless, over time, this tank will 100% clear up and I can't wait for that day. I know you can't either because this is a magnificent, beautiful 225 gallon aquarium. And this basking platform slash cave that I made is stunning. It is stunning. And I can't really see it. She ate the shell. She ate my naturalistic, my natural shell, snail shell. She was hungry, so that means that she'll eat some snails. That's good. I will feed her some snails for sure. And I'll record it and I'll show it to you. Love the natural stuff. Back to the video at hand. So that's what we're gonna do with this curtain right here. I'll show you how I do that. I have tons of this stuff right here is gonna make it it's gonna make it real easy to put some plants to propagate plants use that right there it's gonna come in real handy and then so I usually wash these in the in the washing machine which that's probably what I'm gonna to have to do hopefully I'm not washing any more clothes hopefully that stopped so this is the only one that's clean all all 40s are dirty they need to be cleaned so we'll do that right now. Hold on. All right, so I got those in the washing machine washing. But before I continue, let's give it to our sponsor, Hyger, for sponsoring this video today. This whole video would not be possible without Hyger. They are going to help us get this sump up and running today, guys. Their products, before I go any further, let me give a special shout out to Hyger for sponsoring this video. Hyger has been out for over a decade making amazing products for all of us in the fish hobby. Whether it be from biomedia blocks, to circulation pumps, to heaters, to lights, to decor, to whatever you may, whatever it may be. They have been around making astounding products for all of us. And they keep innovating and keep pushing the bar higher and higher. Today they are sponsoring this video guys. Check out the link in the description and go on and get on over there and check out Hyger and see what kind of products they may have for you. Today, 
they're sponsoring us with this water pump right here. This is a Hyger Aquarium DC water pump. This is the HG915. Again, this is the HG915. Check them out. This pump right here, use it in a wide array of different things. We're going to use this pump today with our sump right here. I did have a sump, I did have a pump before, but you know what? I'm sure I'm gonna appreciate this one a lot better than the one that was giving me issues before. So, with that being said, let's do this unboxing together. It's a cool little box, I like that. Okay, so you open it up, first thing you see is a styrofoam sheet. Get that out the way. We have the controller right here. Very, very neatly packaged. We have the user manual. We may need that. If you're like me, you probably don't. You know, I like to just start messing around with stuff first and then use the manual if I can't figure it out. This right here, this little box is plug, plug right there. O-ring, do not lose this O-ring. You will be sad. You'll have a leak that you could never stop. And then these are all the different fittings. I'm sure that this will allow me to use the holes of different sizes. So that's, that's wonderful right there. That is absolutely wonderful. So it's actually two different sizes. You got, you got this one, smaller, uh -huh, uh -huh. and then you have the larger one, right? Okay. And this right here is, I'm sure this is what sucks the water in. And Oh, here's another O-ring. So I'm pretty sure they, each O-ring for each size. Do not lose either O-ring. And then here's, so it does slip and come off. So be careful. You don't want that to fall into the ground. So it just slides in. Good thing I was holding on to that cord. Slides in just like that. And so there's a little rubber stops and basically just, that's it. And this right here, so this is one way of it sucking in, and I'm pretty sure that this is the this is the other way. So if I want to do it like that, just like that. That's the other way. And I will probably have it like that. Now if I was putting this into my trash can sump, something like that. I use the, I'd use this one. If I was trying to drain the tank, I'd use this one. But since I don't plan on having any sand or any kind of debris like that on the bottom, I think that's where this one come in come in handy. Because um, you, def you definitely don't want to get stuff sucked into here. But uh, yeah, so a couple different fittings to go or, or uh, strainers, a couple different strainers. So that's dope. Let's go ahead and... Um, and get this going. These are the hoses I was looking for. Right here. And I actually have a whole lot of media, well, lava rocks and um, these bio balls. I'll keep the bio balls. I'll, put, I'll throw the bio balls in the tank in there, in the 225. As far as the lava rock, I'll put the lava rock into the sumps right there. Matter of fact, I'm going to throw all of that media into that butter tank, something I'm going to set up because I got to set it up. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, so all of that actually, we'll go over here. We'll go over here. So back to this thing right here. So typically, I gotta, I gotta clean all of this. Typically I would use like vinegar, some vinegar water to, to basically clean all of this. I cleaned out this beautiful sump already. 
but I will rinse it out again because it's been sitting here for a while. Uh, and I'm happy because once we get this sump back up and running and I put the skimmer, which is right here, it needs to be clean. Once I put this skimmer back in there, I have two FX6 filters right here filtering this guy. Once I do that, I'm taking one of these filters down. The idea is to phase out all of these canister filters. I have one, two, three FX6. Oh, I have four FX6 filters running in here. I have four FX6 filters and then one FX4. I don't want any of these FX6 series filters running in here at all because I love them a lot. I feel like I'll keep them just in case, but I believe that they draw too much power, too much energy. I feel like that, and they don't house enough of the biological media that I like to house. I think they're almost like, you know, um, they have a lot of sponge though, they do. But um, nonetheless, that's what the goal is. So once we set this up, in a couple of days, we're dropping off one of those FX6 filters, and then we'll work on making sure that everything's staying balanced, and then I'll take off the other one, and long as my parameters stay same, stay the same and they're good, then we'll keep it off. If something changes, then, then we'll go ahead and address it. But that can, that, that, that trash can right there, it's full of media. Like I said, I'm about to watch, watch. All right, so y'all remember when I was making this in the apartment, this was supposed to go into our pond the first ply with aquarium actually that's what it was supposed to go in so man it's crazy how things change but nonetheless we are still 100 percent going to finish building that check it out y'all remember that so i just used cement to build that it did break on the way over, but you see, uh, you see how I was doing it. It was actually a big swim through, big, big circle. Real cool. All right, so let's pull this, pull this out. I'll even show you how I patched this, how I patched it. I just put silicone on the inside and the outside. I just put silicone on the inside and the outside back there. That's it. The only section that was leaking, literally, was the middle compartment that houses the skimmer. Crazy. So let me go ahead and rinse this out. See, I even got media blocks still back there. See? All those Hyger media blocks. I've been using Hyger products. So yeah, I'm gonna rinse that on out. Be right back. Got everything cleaned up. Let's put this. Only thing we missing is uh one of those one of those filter socks. That has to wait. I even cleaned off our skimmer. So I will not disconnect the FX6 right here yet. Again, I'm gonna do it in sequence. I'm gonna set, I wanna set this up first, see how, see how this thing is working. You know, it's been a minute, see how this thing is working. Then I'll go ahead and disconnect one, which will be this one first. And then I'll go ahead and do the other one. Cause I wanna put like a 40 gallon down there. All right, so we got the O-ring right here. Let's set this on up. O-ring goes right into that space right there. Did you see me do that? I put the O-ring right there. Now I will take the smaller of the two. This is the smaller one. Smaller connection, hose connection. And then just screw this right on there. Now the hose that I need fits right there. I just gotta find the correct hose. 
So the one that I was previously using, I hope it fits. Because everything was on point. This was, I'll show you the pump that I was using. It's the green one that I've been using to empty the water out of my aquariums. And I will keep using it for, eh, I'll probably keep using it for that. Maybe, I don't know. But it's nice to have options when it comes to anything fish related, really. So let's see if this one will fit. And it looks like it will. So I could even, if it won't fit on there, let me show you. So will it fit? I could warm this up. I'm going to use the heat gun, warm this up a bit, and then put it on there. Cause it's not going on there easily. Oh, and the heat gun is still plugged up and ready to go. So you don't have to do this if you have the correct size hose, but this hose is just like almost the exact size of that piece of it's almost the exact size of that connection so I do have to do that because I have everything else connected to it I'll show you come on get on there get on there So one thing you can do is sometimes add a little bit of water on it, on it so it'll slip, so it can slide better. All right, we, I think we on there. Let's just take it off of that pump. I don't wanna mess the pump up. I don't wanna mess up the fitting either, but I could easily get it on there like this. All right. So that's even better. So when you, so take it apart. When you get it on there, take it apart. It has this little end right here where you can actually twist and help push, get it on there better. And uh, that's gonna be essential to get it on there good. Perfect, perfect. And I still will warm it up a little bit. And again, I don't have to do this, guys. This is not an issue with the Hyger product. This is just the fact that I'm using what I have and I'm not buying anything. All right, that's good. That's good. A heat gun right there is necessary and come in and comes in handy in this fish room. All right, there we go. So we're tapped in with that, plugged in. Let's go ahead. We are gonna get this. That sounds like that was a washing machine. That's the filter socks. Let's go grab them. So that's one bleach wash right there. So you hit it with a little bit with a little bit of bleach. That's one bleach wash. And now I want to go ahead and rinse them one time. And then what you do is you make sure you let them dry out completely. Let that bleach evaporate and get up out of your filter socks. I would never just recommend you go and put it straight into the tank right after washing. Don't please don't do that. Matter of fact. Do not do that. That's why it's good to have a couple pair of filter socks. So you could let it dry for a few days and then you could just swap them out like that. That's the best way of doing it. So right now I just connected the controller right here to the pump. And then from the pump, it connects to this DC power. right just like that so now 
Let's go ahead, give you a better view. All right, so that's easy enough, right? That's the pump. Now, we are going to actually have to drop this in from the top on this side to bring it in. Um, we'll also put this into place. As a matter of fact, let's put it on this side and just slide it down. All right, we are in position. That's what we need. The plug is over here on this side. We got a zip tie on there that I have to cut off. Let's get the pump dropped in from up top. And that came right on off. So, I'll deal with that in a minute. All right. Let's grab it. Who needs a hat, right? There we go. Got that in. I'll need to get this back on there. I think the problem is the hose is really not the correct size. But we gonna get it. We gonna we gonna get this on there. Pump is in place. Awesome. It looks beautiful. I love this little controller. I'm gonna put this somewhere. Maybe not in the front, but I love the fact that I have this controller. That's amazing. Okay. I'll plug this one into this side. Let's go ahead and drop this in, connect the hoses, drop it in. I hope the hoses are long enough. Just like that. And this sump and everything is made by eShops. All right, just like that. So let's drop this in right on over here too. I need a ladder. I have a black one up here, a black curtain that I was trying on for size but it just wasn't even long enough. So it's definitely time to put the gray one on. All right, let's open up this space a bit. Make room, make room. All right. Get dropped in. dropped in. Let's get those two connected. Ooh, it is it's low. Water level is low. I need to drop this box a bit because um, we are not rocking and rolling the old school way. We used to have it real low. I mean, have the water real high. But uh, I'm not doing that no more. All 
right. Still nowhere near. Okay, and then also, I need to find a way to keep it like that so it won't have a little tilt. FX6 is actually in the way. So let's go ahead and, uh, and do what we were gonna do from the start, which is move it out the way. And this hose just keeps coming off. I'm not, I'm not liking that. That's, that means that it could possibly do that at any given time. Came off again. All right, let's get a different hose. After I move over this FX6, just like that. Still plugged in, moving both over. Matter of fact, all right. Plug back in, still working. Okay, let me find a better hose. I'll be right back, guys. All right, guys, so look, this is what I did different. I went ahead and just took away, took off these two fittings first, and then I made sure that I got this hose down as far as I possibly could. Now, it should be able to work because it's stuck to that size all the way down. See, like that, whereas before, it wasn't going down as far. So that's my recommendation for it. Try it that way. Yep, see, that's the difference. Let's go ahead and get that back on. Just like that. All right, so we got everything out the way. Let's just go ahead and get the sump back into place, put some water in this tank, and connect everything. All right, all right. So, got everything connected. All right, now that everything is connected, let's get some water in this tank. That way when I take some water out, matter of fact, that's so I can even take some water out because that skimmer box is up high. That overflow box is up high. So let's see if 20 gallons is enough. All right, guys, so I did two things. First, I did have enough water to get it high enough. That is high right there. So uh, we need this water going through that filter box and filling that up. The way you start to siphon on these kind of kind of bites a bit. You need to suck the air out of the tubes that go from this overflow box to the back box. So the way you do it, I don't know if this is this one's not long enough. I'll show you though. All right, here's a very long hose. Typically you want a clear one so you don't get the water in your mouth because that's nasty. So what you do is spring you closer so you could actually get a good idea to how you do this. So you see this? You see this overflow box right there? You gotta get water to it. So what you do is, so what you do is you take this, you put the hose in there and you go as far down as you can. You drop it in to the correct side. When you pull it out, you want this tube to be pointing towards the top, like that, in the middle. That way when you suck the water, you could feel the tube. Because if you just, if it's not like that, 
it won't fill it. It'll be halfway and then it'll go right back into the overflow box that's inside the aquarium. It'll never go all the way over. The siphon don't, will not complete. So let me do this real quick and then I'll show you. This is risky, but I really want you guys to see. All right, so look, dropping it in and then I'm pulling it. Now I'm gonna suck out the air. So look, see the holes right there? I really wanted it right there, but I think I can make that work. Now watch me suck the water, suck the air out of me. Oh, always make sure you have water. You seen that? You seen that? Now let me pull this hose out. There we go. You see it? So it was kind of, it's kind of bad. But that's what you want to do right there. I'm gonna, let me do the other side now. All right, now they both are full. Now let's go ahead and finish this up. All right, so it looks like we have water going in, which is good. It's going in a bit slow. Um, filter socks all clean. I need to let these dry before I can put them in there, of course. Let's see. Why did the siphon stop? I think I need water in these other two compartments. I think that's the reason why. Also, what you could do is to get the siphon going once you have water in the and the little tubes is pour water in the overflow box. The siphon's not going for some reason. All right guys, so the situation here is the fact that I do not have enough water to make that overflow box work correctly. But I do have enough water in that sump down there so we can make sure that this higher pump works the way we want it to work and works better than the pump that we had originally. So uh, let's go ahead and plug that in. Let's take a look at that. And then um, let's wrap this on up. So the intake is right there. Let's, let me lift it up for you. It is this one with the white 90 on it. All right. There we go. Let's see if we can get you some flow. All right. We got flow. You see it? Yeah, you see it. That's all. That's the high pump right there working. It's good flow right there. I like it. Yep. I like it a lot and I love the fact that it has a controller. So let's go ahead and unplug it. So we need to go get some more water today or we need to go get some more water. Let's put it like that. I'll probably get it today. I might not get it today. Nonetheless, we need to get some more water. I need at least another, I just need another like 10 gallons, five, 10 gallons. But um, let's go ahead and get this back up here. And I tell you, this uh, this system with the overflow box where you have to basically use a airline to suck the, the air out of the tube in order for you to get the siphon going, that is trash. E-shops, trash, that's some trash, man. They need to come up with a better system other than that. That is a terrible system. Figure it out, figure that shit out. Anyway, again, thank you Hydro for sponsoring this video. We are above and beyond satisfied with our HG915 Hydro pump. They sent me two of those bad boys. Oh yeah, we happy about that. So um, yeah, we have some other things that we have to take care of today. So we're gonna wrap this video on up. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any comments, comment section down below is where you put them. 
Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, follow me on Instagram at The Fish Corner, follow me on Facebook The Fish Corner, follow me on TikTok The Fish Corner. And until next time, guys, peace.